Hello everybody, good morning. Dave Neal here, stand-up comic host of Bachelor Nation News. In this video, we're gonna discuss why Bachelorette Katie Thurston declined a six-figure deal from a fashion company. She opened up with a Q&A while at Coachella, mind you. Clearly shows there's a lot of downtime at Coachella when she's talking finances, but it's very fascinating stuff. Of course, Coachella is a festival where us old millennials feel extra old when Generation Z comes out and dances to musicians we've never heard of. I'm like, who's that band? I have no idea. I'll be in the small tent listening to the jams of the old guy. Okay, that's life. So here's Katie in a crocheted outfit, living her best life. And as we know, Katie was uh, last year's bachelorette along with Michelle Young, left her job doing uh, bank management. We'll get into bank marketing. Well, I don't know what that means. We'll get into all that. But uh, she talks about the lucrative life of influencing, something a lot of influencers shy away from talking about because they're making so much money. Now, before we fire up the pitchforks and get angry, how dare you? I can't believe it. I make X amount. Don't be mad at them. This is sort of part of late stage capitalism, the idea that you work for yourself. Now, we can't fully work for ourselves, you know, but you can work for companies and cut out the middlemen, right? If you build up a big enough following, whether through TikTok, you YouTube, Instagram, have a newsletter, a blog, whatever influence you might have, you can receive good compensation for that. So if you're going to go on a TV show and be publicly shamed and all the different things that, uh, that, that us normal plebeians don't have to deal with, one of the results is you build a big following. So she has to deal with comments like this. Someone said, hi, I'm curious why you are wearing a mask outdoors and then not in your very next story and a lot closer to other people. Please stop promoting COVID theater. And then she replied, it's for the dust. <laughs> Four words of beauty. It's for the dust, you idiot. Oh, boy. Isn't that funny? And I bet you this person didn't respond to anything. But it's just like you have to deal with, I'm sure, comments like this all day long. I've only got 14,000 followers on Instagram. She's got, um, my guess is what, eight, 881. And so she's bet she dipped below that million, uh, that million, a number. And part of that comes with people don't want to follow you. If you talk about things that don't always fit into their sort of agenda. Now we know Katie's donated to rain, of uh, uh, you know, of. Uh, you know, the organization she's donated to so many different organizations. And again, this sounds like a PR piece for Katie, but it's not. I've actually been a fan of Katie way before I knew her because she reeks of authenticity to me. She tells you what she feels. If she makes a mistake, she'll tell you about it. So she did just that in her Q&A where she talked about um, some of the finances, like I said, here she is when you feel like when you realize it's a three day festival. So there she is not, you know, not being able to last. I get it, Katie. You're in your 30s. You need to ice your feet at the end of the day. So here's the Q&A. We'll talk about it at the end. I'll share a little bit of info about my finances, which operate differently because I um, I, in, I have ads that are inserted into my videos. So when you guys watch my content, you support me that way. And then I've got the uh, uh, revenue stream from Patreon which is up to 241 people. So patreon.com slash Dave Neal is a private membership only community where people can donate as little as $5 a month to watch my extra content. So I always give at least three videos a day to the public audience and then the private, I think is up to around $1,600 a month. So it's a, it's a good revenue stream. And of course, you know, when you're making content on your own and don't have a boss, you want as many different revenue streams as possible, which is why I've got the Dave Neal show, non-bachelor content. I think, I think by the end of the year or maybe next year, this Dave Neil's show is going to outperform my Bachelor channel because there's a higher window, there's a higher threshold for possibilities outside of the Bachelor niche. The Dave Neal show has about 5,000 subscribers, whereas my Bachelor channel has 55,000. But um, if I had to take a guess, I would say that that's going to outperform as I've been following more mainstream celebrity news like the Johnny Depp Amber Heard uh, defamation trial that's happening right now. I'll have a video up later today for that. And also on Patreon, I'll have a video up at 11 a.m., a live stream. So those things have been part of my revenue stream. Let's talk, go back to Katie. Someone asked if they tell the truth about products working or they're get, or what are they? Oh, sorry. Let me, let me start this over. If they tell the truth about products working or they're just getting paid to rave about Katie said, I think it's obvious when influencers aren't being genuine. I want to believe in the product if I'm promoting it. I recently backed out of a lash deal. I'm guessing that's eyelash. Uh, after testing them out at a wedding and not feeling the cost and quality was worth it. So 
When you see different influencers out there, a lot of them that are maybe biting their tongue about social issues or not talking about politics or certain things, chances are they're just getting paid a lot of money and they don't want to ruffle any feathers. That's why I'm sort of critical of certain people with platforms that I go, tell me your opinion about something, anything really. And that's not to say that I would unfollow you if I disagree with you. I'm a stand-up comedian. I, I see people all the time get offended about different jokes and then in the, you know, whatever affects their personal life. So you can't please everybody. You can just try your best to be morally sound and, and, and operate and, and march into the direction of your doing. But you see with influencers, so many just want to go, boop, I don't know, you know, no problems here. And that's because they're cashing checks and not asking questions, which we're going to get into shortly. Someone asked you Q and a promoting fast fashion when you know it's killing the earth. Now, fast fashion, as we've talked about in the past is, uh, it's hard to avoid. Most companies that you are wearing and I am wearing are fast fashion, uh, which means they're made just mass produced for short um, turnaround. It used to be you'd get a t-shirt with it for a couple of years. Now it's like, all right, six bucks. And now this, by the way, this was a lucky brand, which I'm sure if you Googled it, it's made in Bangladesh by a 10 year old. I have no idea. The point being is that some companies are worse than others and some are egregiously bad. And we'll share that in a second. I definitely dropped the ball recently. Let's chat about the crochet dress I was gifted. Learn that machines can't mimic that pattern, which means it is created by hand. So then you should be questioning the background of that item based on cost and company. What this means is that based on size of company and cost of item, that the piece itself may not have been sourced ethically, low labor wage, and also bad for the environment, you know, polluting, you know, this and that. The piece itself may not have been sourced ethically. Okay, with the crochet with crochet becoming trendy, I encourage people to shop smaller and purchase directly from crochet artists. On that note, I'll use this opportunity to highlight at Thread Up, who I do actually work with, while mentioning that I declined a six-figure deal with uh, asterisks, 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 for the exact reason the commenter above mentioned. Now, plenty are assuming that she uh, d- did not that she declined the deal with Sheehan, which is S-H-E-I-N. I think that would be a pretty um, obvious guess. Now we know um, other people in the Bachelor world, Madison Pruitt, and um, and some others, I can't think of the other names, Becca Kufrin. Others have been doing deals with Sheehan, which is like child labor, um, uh, they've 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 uh, taken they've yeah, they had a swastika on an item. I mean, it's problematic. If you just search date, like if you just watch this, if you just go to YouTube and search Dave Neil Sheehan, you're gonna see all of my um, videos I've made about Sheehan and um, Fast Cash slammed by fans. Bachelor Becca Kufer and slammed for working with fast fashion company Sheehan. Bachelor star Madison Pruitt called out for influencer partnership with fast fashion company Sheehan. So it's um it's it's not good, folks. Um, and it's a six figure deal. Now, again, look, we all celebrated Easter this weekend. Some of us did. And like a lot of people that think I get really upset at, uh, um, or, or that I, that I bash certain people for their religious beliefs. I've had to block people because of such vitriol that's triggered from me even talking about different religious beliefs, uh, which I'm not surprised by. It's the United States of America. We're divided by religion and certain moral boundaries. You know, uh, it's, it's, <laughs> we can't have conversations anymore, uh, without getting uh, triggered and offended and, and things like that. And I sound old when I say that, but it's true. I've seen the DMs. Anyway, my point being is that I talked about Madison Pruitt. You can love her for her um, ministry work or whatever else she does within her church, but she's okay selling her books, making a lot of money, and also cashing in on fast fashion like she in. Getting paid a lot of money. She got a huge following. So if Katie was offered six figures to do a Shein ad, let's just go up to Madison Pruitt and and just see where she's probably at here. So Katie's at 888,000 followers. Madison's at 1.7. So let's say on the blow end, Katie was offered six figures by Shein, 100,000. Madison Pruitt's probably offered a quarter million dollars. That's wild levels of money to promote a company that engages in child labor, um, you know, it's slave labor is what it is. It's modern day slavery and it, it's, it's not okay. Uh, we know that anyway. So you start to see like, look, people were getting mad at Katie cause she brings a sex toy into the show. Oh my gosh, my Christian eyes. I could never, but the point is, is that, <laughs> is that, uh, we need to do a better job of, of sort of understanding people, uh, in their moral fiber and not just being so, you know, so, um, I don't know, e- easily swayed into putting people into one camp or another based on if they're sex positive or if they're this, or if they're that Katie declined a lot of money that you and I, and a lot of people might be tempted to take. We might, 
You know, I'm not in, listen, I mean, I, I'm not their demographic, but I've, I don't have the following size where I've had to wonder where my moral fiber stands when it comes to promoting certain products. But uh, boy, you could just see Dave. Hey, it's discount code Dave promoting Shein. You know what I mean? Um, I know because I've been talking so much about Shein, a lot of you guys are going to be getting banner ads for Shein because they advertise on YouTube. You know what I mean? I don't control that. You can decide if you like ads or not. I think, I don't know. You can figure that out. Don't, don't spend money. Don't click on their links. How much money do influencers make? Lots of questions about this. Many will make six figures and on all ends of that low end to high end, some can easily make a million if they say yes to everything. Micro influencers can still make a decent living that that easily has them comfortable. While at first it was shocking to learn what brands pay, it's still cheaper than other forms of marketing. I used to be a marketing manager for a bank. For, for example, I may have the target audience a brand wants to connect with, so they pay me for creativity, filming, the talent, editing, and direct access. This still produces a greater return on investment in comparison to, to traditional marketing methods, TV commercials, radio, printed ads. This, this is what I love about what I do. There's people that have a small, or I, sh I should say, there are people with a smaller following than I have that have three, four, five different employees. There's podcasts that get less views. Mine gets one to two and a half million views a month at a seven to eight minute watch time. So I get up to 15 million watch minutes a month, which I'm not saying uh, is, is amazing, but it's better than some small cable programs that have dozens of employees. I'm able to kind of, like Katie said, be the talent, be the behind the scenes editing, be all the different tech stuff and also be the marketing. So companies are willing to pay a lot more. At the end of this video, I'll tell you what I paid in taxes this year. It's a lot of money. Uh, <laughs> do they get scared about the longevity of influencing and what happens if it stops being profitable? I wouldn't say I get scared personally, although I'm sure people do. It depends on your relationship with money. I was perfectly happy in my middle-class career that I could always go back to. The influencer life provides more than necessary based on what my needs and wants are. However, I will be branching out once legally I'm allowed to. I respect the hustle of Caitlin Bristow with her various businesses. I'm not there. I'm at the hotel. But John is there, so if you see him, tell him hi. I... I'm 31 and tired. <laughs> do companies reach out to you directly in your DMs? How do you know it's legit? Some DM me, some email my team, brands that I have a genuine love for that she reaches out to personally. Yeah, if you love a brand, you reach out to them. How exhausting is it to actually be on your phone 24-7? She says she only spends two hours a day on her phone scrolling, engaging, and pleasuring, and all those things. How do taxes work on influencing? I've seen people say you technically only pay half. Last one before bed. If you pay taxes as an individual, you will definitely pay a lot in taxes. However, financially smart influencers will work with a CPA and create a business to help manage the flow of income versus expenses, which will also result in paying less in taxes. As much as influencers get paid, they also have business expenses and are now self-employed and paying for things like medical insurance and retirement. Yeah, that's right. So I'm a small business owner. I've created an S Corp, which is basically uh, just, um, it's a sole proprietorship uh, LLC. I could be wrong. I don't know. But anyway, um, you, you you pay a lot of money if you, you know you, you make money you, you you're not protected or you're not you don't have taxes take out of taken out of your paycheck every week so like like for me personally this year I knew I was going to have a big tax liability in 2021 I ended up um, prepaying my taxes as recommended by my CPA uh, to the tune of sixty five thousand uh, dollars and I ended up uh, showing over thirty thousand dollars in expenses from a five thousand dollar computer to maybe five thousand dollars I had a five thousand dollar camera purchase and a few other different four hundred dollars two hundred dollars my hair cost me six thousand I'm kidding <laughs> but the point being is that after I was able to sh um, prepay my income, which my tax and which, which by the way, I have no idea why I'm not a CPA. I have no idea why that because I now have a small business. I was, I was advised to prepay before I filed my taxes, but I was able to get a 20 of that back. So I ended up paying effectively uh, just over $40,000 in taxes, which I know might blow your mind. It's more than I made the, the year before COVID started <laughs> in plenty of years. Um, but there's a benefit in a, um, a to creating your own content there's a benefit to building your own equity, to not having a boss per se, but being out there working for yourself and things that you believe in. So I encourage anyone out there to work for yourself if you can and believe in yourself and work really hard. I get up 
way before sunrise. I, some days I put in 18 hour days. No joke. I do stand up comedy at night. I'll be in Santa Clarita Tuesday night, tomorrow night. And then I'm actually going to be in Hawaii this weekend for a gig. I'm not really talking about, but if you know me and if you follow the Patreon, you know why I'm in Hawaii. If it's for a different gig, uh, you can ask me on Patreon, but I won't get into it here. Um, but I've had, I've, I, ha I have had people like accuse me of just, you know, I, I, I get, you know what? You get shamed a lot when you talk about your finances. And I understand why people don't do that but it's built into the system. Employers don't want you to talk about your salary because you may be getting paid a lot more or a lot less than the person next to you. If you're in a company, normalize talking about your salary to your fellow employees because chances are the reason they don't want you talking about it is because you're getting ripped off or somebody's getting ripped off. Your bosses are making a lot more and you know we live in a world where there's this anti-work culture and I get it and it exists because people are breaking away from the norm, from working for the man and realizing that while there might be some nice job security to take an $80,000 paycheck while you work as a bank manager... Um, the ch the second that bank gets acquired by another bank or people no longer live in that area of town, they close the bank. You, you're just, you're just shit out of luck. You know, that's just an example. So many people, it works for you till it doesn't companies hold health insurance over our head and make, uh, you know, uh, the, the simple human right, uh, of, of wanting to be healthy, a, um, a sort of job perk and that's garbage. So I'd rather work for myself, pay a shit ton in health insurance and all the other things, because I have the perk of not of cutting out several different middlemen and I can make the salary that, you know, someone who was maybe a VP at um, E Entertainment would be making. But this is Dave Entertainment. I get to do it for me. It has less of an ego. I don't get that fancy business card and get to drive to a set every day. I'm in my gym shorts in my second bedroom, but um, that's the life you live, folks. So if anyone wants to talk more about this, I'll talk about it at 11 a.m. Pacific time on my Patreon, patreon.com slash Dave Neal. I feel like this video is all over the place, but I'm trying to open up with some of the back end stuff without feeling too much shame from the audience because, oh boy, is it triggering to talk about these things. Let me know what you guys think. We'll see you at 11 a.m. Pacific time on Patreon. More content coming your way. Bye, everybody.